or underemployed, uneducated, undegreed, frustrated. Could this be an apt enough description of the average African youth? This was me 30 years ago on the streets of Nairobi, angry, frustrated, unemployed, stuck, angry because I felt as if nothing was working out, at least for me. unemployed, and wondering what does the future have in store for me, afraid. How many youth in Africa feel that way right now? How many youth in Malawi feel that way right now? How many youth in this room <laughs> feel that way? right now. And yet, each and every one of them knows that there's something inside of them that they can give. There is something great inside of them that just needs to be discovered and put out there. What do we do? to identify the gifts and the talents in our youth. In the West, we hear about how they screen their young before they enroll them into school. The gifted are set apart and enrolled into gifted programs. Here in Africa, when we are enrolling our young, we screen them for disabilities. We do not identify any of the giftings or even try to harness them or develop them. I was lucky to discover my gift by trial and error, <laughs> to be completely honest. And through a variety of fate and fortune to have the opportunity to develop that gift which had to do with taking technology and helping it solve people's problems. A few months after this picture was taken, I started a company in Nairobi, a computer company. We were four of us as co-founders. And we had this huge dream. We sat down at the beginning and tried to think about a really nice name that would be very appealing and open doors for us. This was 1993. And after sort of really applying all of our collective energies, creative energies, we came up with the name Corporate Computers. Not very creative, but still, that's the name we chose. Corporate computers was a huge success for all of five minutes. <laughs> Unfortunately, once the money started coming in, once we started closing bigger and bigger and bigger deals, we started fighting over what to do with the money. And we couldn't agree on how to apply the funds that were coming into the company. We were disorganized, we were undisciplined. A lot of it had to do with inexperience, but most of it had to do with a lack of knowledge. Three years later, the company went belly up and collapsed. And that was the end of that story. What lesson do we learn from this? A little knowledge goes a long way. 
The good book says, get wisdom. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. What can we do to impart this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding to our young people so that they have a better chance at avoiding some of the mistakes that I made? And this brings me to the story of my next company. Well, not my next, because I started quite a few, <laughs> but the one that I'd like to share here with you. A few years later, once again, I was starting a new business. Yet again, it was in Nairobi, Kenya. And coincidentally, we were once again four co-founders. Yet again, we decided to come up with a really, really nice name. We needed it to be catchy. We needed it to be technological sounding, because the company was an internet service provider. And after sort of squeezing out all of our creative juices, we distilled an amazing name, ISP Kenya. An ISP in Kenya. Duh. Uh, that's not really creative, is it? <laughs> anyway, you know. This time, we had a solid founding team. Hamish was a finance guy. Sunny was a sales guru. He could sell anything to anyone. I was the techie, a systems and networking engineer. Yaz was a passionate, driven, and very competent business manager. We worked hard, we worked smart, and six years later, we had built this startup into a company that was acquired by our competitor, one of our competitors, for slightly over a million dollars. That was a lot of money back then. You know, every company sort of longs, or every, the, founder, the founders of every, next slide please, the founders of every company long for that exit, the opportunity to cash in on the hard work that they've been doing. And we got our payday. But, unfortunately, I walked away with zero from that deal. Why, you ask? Why, you may wonder. Well, at the start, when we sat down and decided to begin this company, I turned down my offer of 25% shareholding in the business. Instead, I said, I would, want, I would like to have a guaranteed salary to take care of my family, even though I had only just gotten married and we didn't even have any kids, not much of a family to speak of. I didn't have a true appreciation or understanding of how shareholding can be translated into value as you build a company block by block. What can we do to help young people in Africa understand the principles of finance, the concept of creating value by consistently growing a business month after month, year after year, to the point where it becomes attractive enough for an acquisition or any other type of exit. What can we do to help more young people in Africa be able to create such successes? The lesson that I learned from this experience that I'd like to share with you is that starting a company calls for sacrifice. We need to invest time and money, energy, faith, passion, heart 
into that. Fast forward a few years, and now we find ourselves in Malawi, the warm heart of Africa, a small, unknown, uncelebrated, but extremely beautiful country. And I'm starting yet another company, an internet service provider called Converge Technology Networks. We started well in January of 2019, and we grew slowly but steadily from zero subscribers in January of 2019 we had a hundred homes connected and receiving broadband internet by the end of that year and then COVID-19 hit in May of 2020 I wrote down these words. As I write this, my latest business venture is on the verge of collapse. Simply put, we've run out of runway. There's no money in the bank. Our customers are unable or unwilling to pay. Our suppliers are hostile and unsupportive. I feel as if this is the end. And really, that's how it felt. It was tough, it was hard, but it wasn't only tough for us, it was tough for the whole world. So many businesses failed in 2020 because of the impact that COVID had on the rest of the world. But we pulled through. We managed to get through it. Somehow, over the preceding 26 years, of hardships and trials, it had built a certain level of toughness inside of me, which had brought me to the point where I knew that this too shall pass. Last year in December, I had the opportunity to travel to Washington DC and on the sidelines of the US Africa Business Leaders Summit, signed a deal with the US government where they are supporting us and funding us to be able to expand and connect more homes in Malawi to the internet, many for the first time. Last month, we kicked off our project preparation and in 18 months time, we expect to be at the position where we can begin to draw down the first few tranches of funding for a countrywide rollout. The third lesson I'd like to leave with you is that tough times don't last, but tough people. Sometimes in life things get hard, sometimes in life things get so difficult that we cannot see our way through it. We have to keep on, we have to push, we have to keep on keeping on. So in summary, I'd like to say the three lessons once again. A little knowledge goes a long way Starting a company calls for sacrifice, and tough times don't last, but tough people do. Thank you.